Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Million Dollar Cars at the Peterson Automotive Museum. My name is Leslie Kendall, I'm the Chief Historian, and I'm here right now to talk about the 1948 Tucker. I think this is probably one of the most well-known failures of, of any vehicle by virtue of the fact that they actually made a movie about it. Uh, they only built 51, one prototype in 1947 called the Tin Goose, and 50 pilot production cars in 1948. A lot of people look at this and say, oh, it's a Tucker Torpedo. Actually, that's not true. It's a Tucker 48. Uh, Tucker never directly applied the Torpedo name to an operational vehicle. So there were 50 Tucker 48s made in the year 1948. And the Tucker has a lot going for it. It embodies all of the important characteristics that you'll find in a million dollar car. It was a good performing car. It was very well built. It was hand built when it was new, although a little bit under engineered, but it was hand built. Uh, it, it had a, a look uh, akin to, to no other, and it was extremely rare. Uh, again, only 50 were made, and people are so interested in this car that they know where every one of them is. They've, they've documented the ones that are lost to history, um, and, and of course they know where all the others survive. Uh, and we're lucky to have this Tucker in the collection of the Peterson Automotive Museum. Serial number 30. Um, this was one of three vehicles that belonged to Preston Tucker personally. When you look at this car, you have to think about the vehicle in the context of its era. Picture it next to a 1948 Ford or a 1948 Chevrolet or a 1948 Plymouth. This car was so far ahead in terms of styling, in terms of technology, in, in terms of aerodynamics. It really had a lot going for it. And in terms of safety also. One of the safety features of the car was said to be the central headlight, which steered the direction of the front wheels. And if you've ever driven one at night or have ever seen the, the headlight steer, it actually does work. Uh, of course, it doesn't light your way until you're already heading down that way, but it's an interesting idea and it shows that Preston Tucker was thinking a little bit about more than just giving people transportation. He wanted people to be safe. That's why he innovated the pop-out windshield. Uh, and that's why he also innovated what he called a crash zone, uh, a crash chamber. Uh, it was in front of the front seat uh, passenger. It was a, an open area that if you saw an accident coming, you would dive into. And that also means that Tucker, by definition, did not invent the seatbelt, because if you were strapped in, you would not be able to dive in to the crash chamber. Uh, that would have made it impossible. So what you've got is a car that embodies a lot of interest. Another thing this car has going for it is a little styling affectation uh, of suicide doors in the rear. For example, the rear door is hinged at the back, not at the front, which actually makes it easier to get in. Uh, it's a little bit more um, ceremonious when, when you get in. Um, if all the, the cameras like, like now are, are getting my lord or my lady climbing into the car, it's much more easy um, to do that when you're sitting at the front, you get the good front aspect and you get them getting into the car. The Tucker, also has doors that go into the roof. Now this may not seem like a very important aspect, but, but think about it. You would have to crouch down this far to get into the car if the door wasn't about three to four inches higher and built into the roof like it is. So you had a car with a lot going for it. I mean, what other American four-door sedan from 1948 would be worth well into seven figures? We're now standing at the rear of the Tucker where all the action takes place. Uh, unlike other cars of the day, this was engineered from scratch to be a rear engine vehicle. Tucker had intended to put uh, an enormous six cylinder engine with hydraulically actuated valves uh, in the rear and, and have a very, very complicated hydraulic drive system. None of those things came to fruition. Um, so what Tucker ended up doing was going to the Franklin Helicopter Company and obtaining from them flat six helicopter engines that he converted from air to water cooling. Um, 
One thing he didn't count on was the handling characteristics of a vehicle with an engine that sat behind the rear axle. It was like driving an early Porsche, but with, but with every uh, difficulty scaled up. Uh, this is not a car to be thrown into corners. Um, it's a car to be driven very carefully, but it's a hot rod. This is a helicopter engine, remember. Torque was very high. Opening up, you can see the flat six engine of the Tucker was derived from a Franklin helicopter unit. This is an engine, remember, that was supposed to lift a machine off the ground. It was supposed to be powerful enough, and indeed was powerful enough, to lift an entire um, mass of dead weight into the air. So you can imagine, applied to road-going trans uh, transportation, just what a hot rod this car was. It could really move down the road. Um, and you look at it and you look, well, it doesn't look like much, but again, think about it. It was engineered for, for torque, uh, not necessarily horsepower, and this car has torque in abundance. Now, the more observant among you probably noticed that in spite of the fact that they were never officially called Tucker torpedoes, that this one is labeled a torpedo. That is because when Mr. Peterson purchased the car, it had this badging on it. We don't know that it wasn't original with the car, therefore we left it on. If it happens that we find out at some future date that we should take it off, we'll remove it and stencil in red Tucker lettering like most of the other ones have. Thank you everybody for watching. Be sure and hit the like button and subscribe.